Hi, my name is Sibion. You might have seen me post on the official Starbase Discord or seen a few of my PvP videos um, in Starbase on YouTube. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about using mouse aim to emulate joystick flying in Starbase. Um, so one thing that annoys a lot of players in Starbase is that there is no official uh, joystick or gamepad support which means that you're usually stuck flying ships with the keyboard, which is a bit um, not the best. So I'll try to keep this short and go straight to the point, but before that I just wanted to mention a few, few, few things just a little wise and explain the situation. So in Starbase you use levers to control your ship, um, so right now I'm moving left and right. But one thing is that keyboards are essentially Boolean inputs, which means it's just either on or off. So the way it works is when you press, um, let's say, yaw left, um, as long as you keep the button press, it's going to tell the lever, keep moving until I turn it off. And then, as you can see, there's a level bind move speed and centering speed, and you guys probably already know this, but it basically says when you turn it off, move it at the speed set and it'll keep moving until it reaches the max output and then when you let it go it'll just center the speed that you've set it means that if you want to do like very finite in, uh, input changes you kind of have to like either you just slowly spam your key or a bit more or you just hold it down and that's not the most precise this also gets annoying when you want to do two inputs at once because you have to use two of your fingers and do that and it's quite tricky um, now we do fortunately have a thing in Starbase called mouse aim. Um, so one thing about Starbase is that it, because it's an early access game, it's more of like a beta and alpha and for games. So not everything has been implemented, and some things have, but they're quite janky. Um, so what we're doing is we're kind of like using just what's available in the game to try and patch our own solution. So if you press the C key, you have the mouse aim button uh, mode and immediately you'll see if I move my mouse cursor around it moves the ship and a fun thing about this is that if you only move it like halfway well it does kind of give you that finite input and you can see the um, lever at the bottom of my screen is matching the motion of my mouse quite precisely so that's what we want to use to emulate the joystick input um, another thing to note is that if you see the numbers on the screen they kind of match the value so at zero they both say zero if I move everything to a corner, it's minus one, one, or one, one, and so on. Um, that's a way to like map, you know, this explains what this screen is doing, essentially. Um, first little thing that I'll mention, or another little thing I'll mention quickly is that you can actually bind joystick controls directly in-game. Um, so I'll, I'll not do, I won't do it right now, but you can actually like click, this is the bind set menu if you press V, by the way. You can click, let's say, uh, rotational pitch, and then just directly bind things with uh, your controller, and it'll actually work. And you'll see, you'll even see a little joystick icon and so on. Um, but the only thing to keep in mind is that it'll still function like a boolean, as if it was a keyboard bind. So if you move your joystick, it'll just behave like a single, uh, a simple keyboard input, and you won't get that finite thing. But for some people, that might be enough. All right, let's move to bindings. All right, so here we are in the Steam UI, and we've got Starbase selected. The first thing that, uh, that I'll do is right-click on Starbase, and so we're in the library, and under Games, Starbase, right-click, Properties. And in here, um, you might have to turn this on. So by default, the controller override settings uh, disable Steam input. So I'm going to turn this on. And as you can see, there's a little icon there. This means that I have an Xbox controller plugged in. So what this does is it allows Steam to take over the controller inputs because by default, the game communicates directly with your controller. Um, but this allows Steam to do some more custom options through Steam to customize the button layout and everything. So we've done that. The other thing I'll mention is the Steam UI can be quite tricky to work with. There's a lot of freezes, crashes, things just don't load sometimes. So for example, there is a controller layout button here and we could just do things through this. But my own experience is that this just crashes or just simply doesn't work half the time. Similarly, if you just launch the game and then open the Steam overlay and go through the controller options there, I also personally find that it just doesn't work half the time. 
The thing that I found to be more stable is to actually go through big picture mode, which the icon of is here. So we'll just go ahead and click there. So now that we're in pic picture mode, um, first of all, we can still use your cursor to move through here if you need to. So I'll just click on Starbase and then I'll just go through to the controller options again. So this is the default layout space. Um, the center area is the layouts you've got selected. Then you've got a button to view your layouts, although we're just going to ignore that for now. There's the edit layout page, which is where we'll edit stuff. So first of all, if you click here, um, you can see your saved layouts. You can see the default templates by Valve, and you can see some community layouts. There are some that have been done by the game. I think I'm set on PT right now, which is why it doesn't show them. But some people like Sinsidious have done some. However, however, I think most of them don't have the mouse uh, settings that I use. So we'll just ignore them for now. So if we go back, so if you're going to do this by default, you probably have the default layouts here. If you want, you can just right click the wheel, click on and then export layout actually creates new layout. So if you want to make a new one, that's probably the one you use. So just for the sake of uh, example, I'll go here, let's select a default template. So I guess this thing called, this thing called uh, gamepad, just, just to apply. So this is probably what you'll see that at first, template gamepad or keyboard and mouse. So from this, we'll just go and do export layout, new starbase mouse game tutorial. There we go. So this is just temporary thing for this video. And now here we can go and do edit layout. Um, I'll just use very simple binds for flying, um, just to simplify things and keep them simple. But in here you can customize everything. The way this would work is basically just assign whatever buttons you want to use to the respective keyboard shortcut that you already have in Starbase. So if you have your cruise button on B, you could put the B key to B to match um, the B key on the keyboard over here. And that's just what you would do for everything, basically. So I personally tend to fly, uh, I've played a lot of Rocket League, so I've matched my inputs to kind of be like the aerial Rocket League stuff, if you've ever played that. Um, so the left bumper, in my case, is going to be a left roll, which is the A key for me. The right bumper is going to be the D key, which is the right roll. And then I will use the right trigger for the shift key for FCU forward. Now for the right joystick, I tend to use the right joystick for the FCU up, down, and left, right. So I'm going to change the right joystick to a directional pad. And then the up's going to be FCU up, down's going to be FCU down, right, left, and right, and so on. Um, remember that with the mouse aim, we're only going to be using the joystick and mouse aim for pitch and yaw. Um, because you can only control those two inputs with the mouse aim uh, menu, basically. And the most commonly used ones are pitch and yaw. So basically the right stick is only going to function as a boolean. These are only going to be functioning like a, the directional pad. So you could put this on D-pad also. It, it just depends on what controller you're using and so on. But the important one and the whole point of this video is basically just going to be this uh, left joystick thing here. So the cool thing about mouse um, controller settings is that you've got a lot of options to adjust things and what's going to be important here. So here you can set it as a directional pad, joystick, joystick mouse, flick stick, all of that good stuff. Radial, you can put radial menus and so on. But the one that we're interested in is the mouse region, which is right here. And what is that is going to do is because of this option right here, return cursor on deactivation, this is going to emulate the snapback feature from the joystick and just basically allow your mouse to snap back to mouse center and behave like a joystick while you're using the joystick. So now that we've set this one up, we can just go back to the game, or actually launch the game in my case. So now that we're back in game, I'll just click on the seat and turn on the mouse aim. And if I pick up my controller, you'll notice that I'm now using the joystick to move things around. Now, one important thing though is that you might be noticing that the mouse cursor goes beyond the square, and that's what we're going to fix next, because this gives us a lot less range to do precise controls. 
So if I just go in the uh, Steam options, uh, and we're still in big picture mode, if I just go in the controller settings, actually I need to go back. There we go, controller settings, edit layout, joystick, left joystick. So if we go in the options, we can adjust uh, some more stuff here. So the region, horizontal position, vertical position, this is just the center of the mouse region. 5050 in this case is just center screen, so we're just going to keep that. The one we're interested in is region size. So I have a 27 inch 1440p screen, and for me, the putting the settings around 28 seems to be the closest that I can get um, to scale it down. Then you can also adjust horizontal scale and vertical scale, but because it's the region is a square, we don't really need to deal with that. Then there's a bunch of other stuff, trigger dampening, auto ring, but I don't use these. We don't really need these, I believe. So if you just go back, go back, go back, go back in game. And now when I use my control, you'll notice that the mouse is snapping inside the region. And that's basically it. That's the that's everything. So now I'll just snap back and I've got a very finite control with the joystick if I need it. Which is all great. Um, one downside with this feature is that if you go to the corners, you'll notice that it doesn't reach quite all the way. Whereas if I use my mouse, we can you go all the way. And that's kind of a natural thing which the with these mouse mouse region um, things, which is a bit unfortunate. I'm sure this other software that might be able to allow you to deal with this. Um, one last thing to note about this though, and this might be a bit of a contentious point, is that I haven't actually found a way to invert the joystick uh, settings, joystick Y settings, uh, when you're using mouse region in the Steam input. So right now when I'm pushing up on the joystick, you see that the ship is moving up because the cursor is set to go up, which makes the ship go up. And likewise, when I go down, um, a lot of flight sim people are used to having inverted uh, up and down controls. Now that's a little bit of an unf unfortunate thing where I don't think you can change that by uh, using regular settings in Steam input. Uh, you might have to do like a custom Steam input profile of some form, uh, but or otherwise just use other software, um, unfortunately, which is part of the reason that I sometimes use a different one. But that's about it. I hope that helped you guys, and I'll do a really quick tutorial for another software next. One little addendum that I just thought about is you can actually fix this in-game by just editing the lever values. So it's a bit uh, janky, but you could just do something like this, which is uh, inverting the minimum and maximum output. And then when I go back to the mouse aim, this basically just fixes the problem and you have the inverted flight stuff now. Um, you could just put these values as a, um, on, a v on a lever, I mean, um, you could just uh, set up some YOLAL or a button to like invert these in some form so that you could use this on any other ship. Um, but this allows you to basically not have to use third party software in order to have that. Just a little in-game thing that I just thought about. Hi again. Like I mentioned, um, unfortunately with Steam Input, I haven't found a way to invert the Y axis to kind of act like many flight sim uh, joystick setups tend to work. And that's why you might want to use a different third party software. I've personally essentially just settled on Joy to Key, and it's mostly because it was basically the first one that I tried, and it basically just worked. Um, but you can use whatever you'd like, and there are some other options that might be uh, give more feature. I'm personally still on the lookout of something that can give me more of a square region instead of circle. Um, so let me know if you suggest anything. But otherwise, this one's basically pretty simple. You just create a um, profile, and then these joystick one or two, I think, are just also profiles. And then here, when you just, if I just move the joystick, you'll see which various options it tends to de to use. Um, this is the D-pad. So the bumpers, this is the triggers, these are the buttons. So very simple, and I just, these are just my own keybind, but obviously they do like something. These just are assigned to things that are in game. But the important ones are just gonna be these ones, the stick number one. And this is quite simple, so there's just a, 
when you double click on it, you've got a bunch of options. You can make them be hey, like a keyboard key, like a mouse click, make it pay, paste text or something. And I use the mouse advanced because it has this option here called spring mode, which basically just does the spring thing that's going to snap back your cursor to the center. Um, and then these options here on the right are just uh, limits. So the values that I've found, and, and this has worked for other people that I know, so these could be universal, but again, you're going to have to play with it potentially. Um, I've got 20 and 20 for the um, uh, left and right, and then 35, I think it's plus 35 and minus 35, even though it says just 35 here. Um, these are for up and down. And obviously this is inverted, so if you see like this points up, but I have 35 down, the other one points down, but I have 35 up, and these are just the maximum ranges, and this seems to basically work for me. Um, so that's basically all you have to do, just sets these one up, sets these, these options, and your joystick's gonna work, basically, yeah. So that's uh, that about covers it, honestly. Um, yeah, hope this tutorial was helpful and hope you enjoy flying with uh, joysticks. I will add one last caveat just in case. Um, I have had comments on my videos about people uh, not being happy about using third-party software. I'll just add one last thing, which is like, it all depends on what you decide to do with them. There's plenty of thing. It's quite a gray area um, because some of these softwares can allow you to do automation now, it becomes really gray because you don't necessarily need these softwares to do that. Sometimes some mice or keyboard that you buy come with automation software like macros. Most games are don't allow macros. Um, and I mean, the simple reason is they don't want like you to create a, like AFK bot scripts. So because you could potentially create, let's say, auto mining type scripts. Uh, it's it's quite tricky in a game like Starbase also because there are I mean we have literally have programming in the game so some of that stuff is naturally implemented inside the game so it's quite all a gray area um, my settings are basically just again used to emulate uh, well used to control the mouse like this I don't have any type of other macros or anything set up here so you guys can say whatever you want um, the main goal was just to show you an option. And like I said, I also wanted to show you the Steam input version um, to show that basically all of this can be done in Steam. Uh, so this should all be pretty good. So yeah, enjoy. Have fun.